Hello, and welcome to AARP's Black Community Book Club. I'm your host, Edna Kane Williams. We are here today with Shelley Stewart, who has a brand new book out called Maddie Sees Boy. Welcome to AARP. We're so glad you could join us today. Well, I'm just honored to be here. Well, we're honored to have you. Now, many of our AARP members will recognize you, or at least your voice, from your years as a leading <laughs> broadcast star. But they may not realize that you're also the successful owner of an advertising agency. You started a foundation in your mother's honor, the Maddie C. Stewart Foundation, which encourages children of all ages to stay involved in education and reading. And also that you were one of the major forces behind the 1963 Children's March in Birmingham, Alabama. You've had quite, quite a life. And uh, we want to talk to you today a little bit about your new book, Maddie C.'s Boy. And what went into writing that book and why you felt it was important to tell that story? Thanks for asking that question. Sure. I really didn't plan to write it. Uh, really? I was really you know, asked many times, Shelley, why don't you tell the story? Why don't you do it? Because you're approaching 80, um, which I'm 80 this year. Mm -hmm. Well, and, I never guess. <laughs> and, and you're becoming a buried, you will become a buried treasure. Mm -hmm. Would you sit down and, and put it down, tell the story? And uh, it came about that. Uh, there were so many people saying that, uh, Shelley, you have been successful, but thought I came from a tune with a silver spoon in my mouth. Mm -hmm. and that was right. not the truth. So uh, that is why it was written, right. not for monetary reasons and not for show, but to, to leave it here and say, right. okay, there it is. Right. Well, to say that you weren't born with a silver spring in your mouth, is, is silver spoon in your mouth is almost a, 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 such an understatement. You, The book... It, was it cathartic for you to read? I don't want to give too much of it away, but you actually begin the story with your mother's murder that you you witnessed. Yes, I witnessed. At the hands of your father. Yes. You know, going through that, it was very difficult to, to do that, but I don't mind answering that question. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, to see Maddie C. killed on a Sunday afternoon in uh. August 39, uh, uh, five years of age, brother seven, uh. to see him chasing her in the little hall in the small house with an ax and hitting her. Your across. father. Yeah, my father. Yeah, right. And knocking her out through a window and she died four days later. Uh, and uh, after that, being given away to a family member and then four months later they putting us out into a vacant lot. The four brothers, Majesty had right. four boys. Right. When mama was killed, notice I said mama, mm -hmm. uh, she was killed. David, the baby boy, was just a few months old. He was right, born in March. Right. Uh, Sam was uh, two years old. I was five and Jerome was seven. So uh, she left four little boys, and family members took us all out, put us in, out on a vacant lot. So uh, To it fend for your, to f it, it really is an incredible story on, on so many different levels. Um, one of the things you focus on is, is how education and reading and just making sure that you your thirst for knowledge, that that seemed to be a real key for your success and survival. And now through the foundation name for your mother, you're trying to, to instill and guide others. Now AARP, we embrace education. We have a very intergenerational approach. How do you inspire people though, especially in this day and age of social media and people are reading you know, short sentences and not books anymore. What do you think of that and, and what's your approach in the foundation's approach? What we did and what I'm doing uh, is touching people. You know, I, social media is fine, but I still believe in a relationship. There's a first grade teacher when I first went into school, ragged as I could be, really, mm -hmm. but that was a teacher who lived in that community who n saw what went on with Mama a year before, mm -hmm. but she hugged me. She was. That first, Mamie Levin Foster was her name. She grabbed me and she hugged me, and mm -hmm. I was smelling very bad that day, I recall. Mm -hmm. But she said, Shirley, if you learn to read, if you get a good education, mm -hmm. you can become anything that you want to be. I was ragged, I was smelling, but that lady her touched me, she right. hugged me. Right. And it stayed with me, even to this day. That's why I can say it now. Mm -hmm. Mamie Levin Foster did that. So what I do now is not rely so much, not putting out social media, mm -hmm. but to go into the communities throughout the United States of America, mm -hmm. touch as many people as I can with the tools that I have, the choice buses that I operate out there around the country, the inside out documentaries. Now, now what, are, what are those? Are those buses that go throughout neighborhoods? Through Well, the buses really there, uh, there are one, two, three of them running now. Mm -hmm. And since 2008 in 21 states, 
over two and a half million children and adults wow. have wow. visited the choice buses wow. that's in existence in the country through the Madison Stewart Foundation wow. and through the Inside Out documentary that we went into the uh, to the prisons on people who would not be paroled and they not talking about how bad they're saying if I could if I had just learned to read if I had gotten a better education. I wouldn't be in here. Mm -hmm. And it's like a message from the grave for right. this. So we're putting that out there, touching the people in that in that manner. So it's not so much of we're relying on some things, but I just believe in holding. I believe in the hugs. Right. I believe in the touching of everyone, no matter who they are, where they are. Such an important important life lesson. Uh, you know, there's so I, I read the book, I was mesmerized by it. There's so many different aspects of your life and one of them that we talked a little bit about you were one of the main forces behind the 1963 children's march you have marched and and worked <laughs> alongside iconic huge historic figures martin luther king fred shuttlesworth what was like that like it, it was it was very easy i don't why, ask why a brown cow eats green grass give yellow butter and white milk about anything mm -hmm. things i believe in god putting things in just mm -hmm. so happened i was there mm -hmm. i'm not that smart i'm not that great anything but fred shelsworth unfortunately people did not know it we did it by design mm -hmm. fred went to the same high school, graduated from the same high school as I. His oh, sister really? was in the Rosedale School that oh. I talked about, Truzella's sister. And we had been together through some things prior to that time. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1958, uh, in Birmingham, uh, while broadcasting, uh, the radio tower that I was broadcasting on was cut down by the Ku Klux Klan because of my bad habits of bringing people, people together, together with right. music. Right. And then in right. 1960, uh, the kids who jumped on the KKK and who happened to have been white and beat them up and let me mm -hmm. get away. Well, it was very easy by 1963, being, you know, well known through that area as I was, when I was approached by uh, Martin Luther King and Charles, uh, James Bevel and the likes, would, Shelley, it's, it's up to you, Can, would you use the media uh, to do something and so that's how the children were involved. And I love it one part of the book you talk about how you actually would talk in code had to. on 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 the radio to tell people when things had to. You know. You had to. Our, our oral history manifesting itself in different ways, right? It had to. You gotta remember it wasn't the first time in codes. Remember the tune Steal right. Away, right. Steal no. Away Home. Yes. Ain't got long to stay here. Right. Remember that was done uh, during the slave during slavery to and send Steal messages. Away was a code. Right. You understand? Right. So it's nothing new. We didn't just invent something. Right. Did you have any sense though what, when you were working with Martin Luther King in the march, how historic no. Your ac activities. No, work. didn't what do it. I did not. It was not done for that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sitting here talking with you. It's not about, uh, you know, the great things. I was always, you know, listening to the older people and talk about outside show being a show off and mm -hmm. things for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. That outside show causes private starvation. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. and and so therefore, <laughs> no, it wasn't for that. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. from the heart. It was the real thing. And uh, no, I didn't mm -hmm. ever mm -hmm. think about what it would be today. Uh, a last mention of the book is uh, that I, I was also struck that it was almost, almost not mystical, but spiritual, that oftentimes your mother reached out and, and touched or, 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 or guided you. Do you still feel her presence? Yes. It, it's never been me. You know, I was a little kid in the mirrors. I talked about being in the mirror. Maddie Mama was always with yeah, me when I would do there. stupid things. I mean, <laughs> I would actually think when I thought I was doing right, I was doing wrong. When I was doing wrong, I thought I was doing right, you know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Mama, somewhat, that spiritual, I didn't have the adult to do it. So from she was that there. spiritual thing did it. She was and there. so in my lifetime, I just felt that if, I, if Mama can do that and she's a spirit, if she's putting that in me, why can't yeah, I, I share do. that with people each and right. every day? Right. Yeah. Well, your mother has, has got to be proud. You've had an extraordinary life. Uh, at this part of the, the interview, though, we just like to have a little fun and just shoot a couple of questions at you and just see if you can just answer off the top of your head. Just the first thing that comes to your mind. If you weren't doing this, what would you be doing? If I were not doing this, what would I be doing? I would probably be... Uh, and then the communities are trying to teach children. I would like mm -hmm. to have been a teacher. As a matter of fact, I would really want to be an attorney. An attorney, really. Yeah. What's your favorite word? My favorite word is truth. Truth, 
That's a great answer. What's your favorite book? My favorite book is Maddie Siege Boy. Maddie Siege Boy. And the Bible, by the <laughs> and way. The Bible. Yeah, yeah. And the Bible. Uh, when you read, do you prefer a hardback, uh, a, a softback? Do you ever read the, the new online fashioned. books? I'm old fashioned. You are? For some reason, I like that hardback, mm -hmm. hardcover. I, I, just, I can't get accustomed to looking at it on the screen now and the stuff. I still like the You, you want to feel something? Yeah, I want to feel something, hand. yeah. Your favorite place to visit? My favorite place to visit is neighborhoods. Neighborhoods? I, honestly, it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, the, the last question is, what do you want people to remember about you in your life? I want, it, want them to remember I'm a human being. I want them to believe in uh, being human, period, mm -hmm. that I was not here talking about how good I was as a black man. Uh, I, I say things that I'm African-American. It's spelled A-F-R-I-C-A-N. Mm -hmm. American, A-M-E-R-I-C-A-N, mm -hmm. both ends with the letters I-C-A-N. I can, mm -hmm. I can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for being here. It's Thank been you for great. inviting great. me. You're an inspiration. You Thank really you are. Thank you, You really are. As you know, this is a book club, so we enjoy lively discussion. Tell us what you think about Maddie C's Boy. Write in the comments section below and follow more of the discussion on our Facebook page. Be sure to watch next month when we will be discussing our next book, The Prodigal Son. And if you haven't seen them yet, check out my interviews with Russell Simmons and Caroline Clark. Now until next time, thanks so much for joining us.